Hello you two folks out there, Facebook friends. This is your boy Lung Yan Wan here and today's video is entitled The Rise of Female Leadership in the Church and Its Effects on Black Males. There are several things that have contributed to the degradation of the African American male. Whether we like it or not, one major theme that undoubtedly contributes to this degradation are the religious practices that take place in so-called churches today. Please understand that my perspective comes as one who was added to the churches of Christ. We do not demand tithing, 10%, speaking in tongues, or any form of ecstatic emotional outpouring. We do value our women and they contribute to the congregations in many ways, but we do not allow women to hold any position of authority outside of leading other women or children. Having said that, I have, on several occasions, attended other denominations that allow women to preach over their husbands. This practice is viewed to be in direct contradiction to the teachings of the Bible. Whenever this discussion comes up in these circles, we get several reasons why they, the women, feel they can stand up and preach. One of the main reasons that they use is that men are sorry and unfit for the position of leadership. Now I am not here to push my religious values on anybody, but I must point out what is taking place in the black community because what we are seeing now is an unchecked increase in the amount of so-called prophetesses, deaconesses, and apostles. These are women who have decided that God has called on them to lead the church. Their leadership permeates the black households and the community as a whole and what they really do not seem to understand is that they are in fact degrading their community women in church leadership have been a cause for great confusion in the black community we live in a day and age where there are very few men in the church to begin with many black homes do not have fathers in them and the few males that exist are so detached from the homes that it is a special occasion for them to involve themselves with the household. Many of the young men in our communities give up on school and soon find themselves in and out of the jail systems with nothing to look forward to but the next buzz that they can get. They soon grow to become adults but are actually living their second childhood going to clubs to find a woman that they may conquer and if a pregnancy shows up they simply deal with whatever situation is handed to them. The men have become indecisive, unmotivated and uncaring about anything other than themselves. Most of them will now brag on the net worth of the woman they are sleeping with. That is of course until that woman begins to demean them for not actually having anything of their own. Let us not forget that the amount of men who have openly taken up the gay lifestyle is disproportionate to any other race and are actually setting social trends in the way people dress with the sagging pants, skinny leg jeans, bright clothing and metrosexual atmosphere that is becoming ever more acceptable and encouraged by society. What upsets me is that with all the crap that society has and continues to throw at us, the church, in most cases, was one of the few places that a man could go to for an example of a man. Yes, there are swindlers in the churches out there who put on performances to collect your 10%, sleep with women, and in some cases, young girls and or boys. Most are sincere in their ministries 
And even if they are in biblical error, they are upholding God's divine order. It would not be much of an issue if the community, the black community as a whole, were mostly atheists and disinterested in Christ. However, what we see today is that many of the men, unable to accept and conform to the hypocrisy and emotionalism that is displayed at these churches, with the falling out, convulsing, speaking jibber-jabber, have instead opted to stop going. The decline has become more prevalent as females have begun to usurp the authority in the church. The silent truth being that men naturally do not want to sit under a female pastor as there is no biblical or social precedent for a man to take a subordinate role under a woman. Most will not speak up against it because they themselves do not study the Bible and for the fear of being labeled as a chauvinist, a hater of women, gay, or being called out on their lack of biblical knowledge or sinful tendencies. The few remaining men simply take a back seat and they no longer become spiritual leaders, but rather followers, allowing the women to become the spiritual leader of the home. Unfortunately for those men, what ends up happening is that when a church-going family allows the woman to become the spiritual head of the home, they by default become the head of the home. Some women who see nothing wrong with a woman preaching try to tell their husbands that they are still the head of the home while telling others that they and their husbands are in equal partnership with one another and all decisions are agreed on by both of them. This basically takes the man out of his rightful place as head of the home and effectively reduces his worth to a paycheck and his penis. Young ladies growing up in these churches get to see a woman leading and having all authority over the men, and in some cases even mama having godly authority over daddy, and grow up even more emboldened to live their life without the need of a man for anything other than money or sex. As a result, they forget about meekness and instead are loud and sassy with attitudes and hold very little regard for a man in any position of authority. When they marry, they usually seek to find a man that is easily controlled. Lucky for them, they have a variety to choose from as there are many boys still trying to learn how to become men. Once they have their boy toy, they go on to implement their rule over their man and keep him under all subjection at all times with Tyler Perry movies, the church, and the help of the government. Those who decide to continue to practice their religion effectively become theologians. They view the Bible as something subject to change and soon the lesbians start to take notice and effectively encourage it because they now see an opening for acceptance of their lifestyle in the church. Young men grow up constantly hearing how men are no good dogs and when they see a lack of men in the church it reinforces the notion of a no good man. The boy then grows up under the wing of a woman who tell them how to be a man. The women tell the boys how to be a man. The young men are guided by their spiritual head, the mother, while the detached father does nothing but go to work and talk to them once in a blue moon. That situation is better than others where the boys grow up in a single parent home with no father figure at all. Left with no guidance on how to be a man, they learn how to be a man in the streets. And because their spiritual influence comes from mostly women, they begin to develop all of the emotional traits on display in many of these churches today. By the time they become adults, they have developed a double lifestyle if they are still involved in the church and when they do find a woman to marry them, 
they do not know how to be ahead of anything. So the woman is given even more incentive to take the lead and the cycle continues. Some of the boys become so feminized that they become gay and they stay in those churches because they realize that eventually just as women force their way into leadership, they too will be welcomed eventually. People, men, black men, this is not a theory. This is a reality that is playing out in our society today. Feminism is dragging the African American community and it is found a foothold in the black churches of our communities. Men, we must take back what rightfully belongs to us in the first place. Stop buying into the notion that you are not good enough and be good enough for yourself, your children, and your community. Lead righteously and help to save our community from destruction. On a footnote, the premise of this is that if we are going to be a church-going people, we need to respect God's divine order. And his divine order is what has permeated our society for hundreds, I dare say thousands of years. There's no reason to think that because we have become spoiled as a society that it is somehow warranted that the roles be reversed. Men, you are greater than the amount of money you bring home and the companionship that you can offer to the wife you marry. You are supposed to be the head. She is supposed to be your helper. There was once a time where this was embraced because it was viewed as perfect harmony. Now we are faced with an issue where we are at war with one another, both fighting over the crumbs that society throws at us. Women need to understand that feminism really does not equal their equality but rather their superiority over men and if we continue this and propagate it and allow it to become a lasting reality men will continue to see the dysfunction that has become ever increasing in our society and in the end it will be of no benefit to either one of us Truly I say that we are witnessing right now that the feminist movement and the way it has carried on against the church has not only degraded our society at large, but it's causing more than division. It is hurting more than just the men. The women, in fact, are being hurt. And unfortunately, the children are the ones that are bearing the brunt of all of it. We cannot change until we go back to the fundamentals. And whether it be by the standard that society has set forth for the past thousands of years, or whether it be by the standard set forth biblically, we have to go back to what it was originally. I will leave it at that as I do not want to rant further. I do thank you for tuning in. Lunya One here. Peace.